Welcome everyone to my top 7 most epic Nintendo Switch launch fails. It's been 2 weeks since the console launch and people have come across some crazy fails caused by either user error or design flaws. If you experienced any of these fails yourself or if there are any that I missed, let me know in the comments down below. Some of these fails may or may not have been fixed by the time you're watching this in the future, but hey, it's nice to see what went wrong in the beginning. Alright, let's get started. Number 1 we all know what happened back in the Wii days when people refused to wear their strap until something expensive broke. So it was a no-brainer that Nintendo would include a strap for each Joy-Con, which is a win. But what is a fail is how frequently people seem to put the strap on the wrong way. Anyone that has done this by accident knows just how difficult it is to remove the strap once it's on the wrong way. Some even go as far as to breaking the tabs or even hurting themselves in the process. Maybe Nintendo should have made the instructions a lot clearer. Or maybe people should just pay a bit more attention. Either way, it happens frequently enough that this qualifies as a fail. Number two. Whoever said size doesn't matter clearly has no idea what they're talking about. Just go ahead and ask Sony and Microsoft to tell you about their <coughs> large hard drive sizes that seem to satisfy the needs of your average consumer. Innuendos aside, you gotta wonder whose brilliant idea it was to equip the Switch with only 32GB of internal memory. And of those 32GB, about 6GB or so is already used up by the OS. You're gonna fill that up pretty fast with downloadable content. I mean, yes, you could expend the memory with an SD card, but even then, the maximum current size available is a 256GB micro SD card, which is still about a quarter of the size less than the 1TB drives offered by its competitors. Nintendo has stated that a 2TB SDXC card will be supported whenever that becomes available. Which brings us to our next fail. Number three. As it stands, it's not possible to transfer your save data from one switch to another. Probably not a big deal for some, but imagine this, just imagine this scenario. Something catastrophic happens to your switch, like, I don't know, it gets falcon punched and blows up, or Wario gets a hold of it and farts on it. And because there was no way to back up your save data online or to an SD card, there goes your life, I mean your hours invested in Breath of the Wild. If it were saved on the micro SD card, you could just pop that into your new Switch and boom, problem solved, or download it online and pick up right where you left off on your new Switch. Hopefully, this will be an added feature in the future. Number four. Some people love the stock look of the Joy-Cons. I personally am drawn a little bit more towards the neon colors myself, but others love to customize everything they own. Fair enough. Unfortunately, if you slap on a decal or sticker onto your Joy-Con or the back of your Switch, be very careful where you get your decal from. Still, others won't care at all because, well, if their paint job doesn't end up being ruined, they'll just slap on another decal to cover up the damage. So the moral of this fail is, be careful where you buy your decals from. Make sure they're Switch safe. Number five. The docking station is a cool thing. It lets you connect your Nintendo Switch to your TV, essentially turning your Switch into a home console. It'll even display games in 1080p, which sounds great, except for the fact that it can scratch the screen whenever you dock or undock your Switch. The plastic inside the docking station rubs up against the plastic screen, which causes scratches. The problem is so bad that people have come up with their own solutions to the problem to keep their console in mint condition. Come on, Nintendo. There's no way in hell you didn't know about this. At least give people a screen protector or something in future batches. Number six. There's a lot of technology crammed into each Joy-Con. With all its features, it's inevitable that something will go wrong, and it did. Enter what some have dubbed one of the biggest flaws in the Nintendo Switch, its connectivity or better yet, lack thereof at times. The left Joy-Con seems to be the one that's most affected by this, randomly disconnecting for, at times, no apparent reason, and having trouble syncing back up to the console. Nintendo has stated possible reasons for this, which include having your Switch near metal objects, interference with other electronics like a laptop, and even a fish tank for possible culprits as to why the Joy-Cons have this issue. Number seven. There are way too many glitches and bugs that have surfaced on launch consoles, which is something that is known to happen on early batches of any new console. And sure, some of these issues could be fixed with the future update, but still, the last thing you want is to have your console make a loud, irritating, high-pitched tone for no apparent reason whatsoever, or for the screen to glitch out, or to have the console completely crash mid-game, or even worse, there have actually been reports of the Switch having the blue screen of death, and any of those things could easily get old real fast. What do you guys think of this list? Was there anything that I left out, or did you experience any of these yourself? Share your thoughts in the comments down below. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for future videos. And until next time, this has been GTR Bytes.